in section two, I wanted to show you uh, something that's really interesting here in, and makes the game fun is the existence of modifiers for shooting. Okay? Because uh, you can imagine that there's a difference between these archers here having to shoot at the zombies, or that, or if these archers here want to shoot at the uh, dryads over here. Because, you know, the dryads are, very simply put, far away compared to where the zombies are. And um, notably, let's, let's make the check, uh, let's verify that. So the zombies are more or less 8 inches away, just being very general. And the dryads are 21 inches away also. Okay. So does this play a difference? Yes, it does play a difference. We have um, shooting modifiers, which I summarized in this table here. Modifiers to the aim value. And these are modifiers for long range, for moving and shooting, and for cover. Okay? Now, the modifier that we were talking about is the one for long range, and uh, it is defined as more than half of the range of the weapon. So, what is the weapon? It's the bow in the hands of the archers, right? The weapon has range 30. Half of the range is 15. And so this means that if you are shooting at enemies within 15 inches, okay, in this range here, more or less, then you can shoot normally. If you're shooting at enemies beyond this point, then you're going to have an aim modifier. And so what happens is that you, as you see here, you have a minus one at the result of the roll of your uh, dice uh, f because of this penalty. Okay? So let's imagine that we want to shoot at the zombies here. Once again, we are shooting our 10 uh, arrows with 3 plus aim value. Okay? No modifier because the zombies are in short range. And so 3, 3, 3, these are successes. And then 5, 5, and then 6, 6, 6. Okay? So we have 8 results that are a 3 plus. If I'm shooting at the dryads, uh, I have to count that each of these uh, results that I've rolled has a minus one. So this one becomes a zero, this two becomes a one, this three becomes a two, becomes a two, becomes a two, becomes the five becomes a four, the other five becomes a four, and this three sixes become um, three five. So all that's happening is that the fact that I have a, um, a modifier because I'm in long range means that I'm not truly hitting my enemy on a 3+, plus, I need a 4+, plus because each number is, is shifting. Okay? So if I roll again and I try and hit the dryads here, instead of aiming at a 3+, plus, I'm only hitting with a 4+. With a and uh, yeah, you see, there's a difference, you have uh, much fewer uh, hits being landed. Okay? Now, this is modifier number 1. Um, which is the range modifier. Uh, there's another modifier to the aim value. Let's move these guys around here. And it's the fact that you can shoot after having moved. Okay. So this is interesting because no, um, because we said that the elven, the high bone archers are uh, what is that? Thirty three. Um, inches away from the silver notches, okay? and now since the range of the uh, of the longbow is thirty, uh, I cannot shoot at those guys. But my archers also have movement five, advance five, so that means that I can push them forward by five, maybe I don't know four, and make a bit of a wheeling movement towards them. And now, since I, I was 33 away and I advanced by 5, that means that now this target is in my reach. 
Okay, so I can now shoot at the archers because I got close enough to have them back in, in my range. But since I moved earlier in the turn, then I lost some concentration and now I'm less effective at shooting. So instead of having a aim value of 3+, plus, uh, since I moved, now I am 4+. plus. It's a bit more difficult for me to hit. And notice that I'm still beyond half of the range, so the modifier for moving and shooting is stacked upon the modifier for the long range. So the very skilled uh, high born archers, which usually hit on a 3+, plus, so with 3, 4, 5, and 6, with 4 results out of the 6 of the dice, now they only hit on 5+, plus, so only with 2 uh, of the possible 6 results, because this 3+, plus has been modified by... Uh, the movement first, the fact that you move, you lose concentration, and the fact that you're past half of the range, it makes the shooting less accurate. Okay. So this is the modifier for uh, moving and shooting. Let's put these guys back a bit. Again. Okay. There is a... Um, um, there is a third uh, modifier, which is the modifier for cover. Yeah? And uh, the modifier for cover means that you have a sort of obstruction between your shooting unit and the target unit. Now, the obstructions can be essentially of two types. There's the obstruction that makes shooting altogether impossible. Because that means that the object that's between the shooter and the target is really blocking the line of sight. And this is the case here, for example. Let me rotate the archers so that you can see what happens. If I have archers and these archers want to shoot at the uh, knights of the grail over here, but there's this hill in the middle, then my line of sight for the archers is going to be blocked by the, uh, by the hill. I'm only going to be able to see in this area of the line of sight and in this area of the line of sight. But everything that's in here in the middle is obscured by the hill because this is the hill obscures the, uh, the line of sight. By the way, if you want to know how can you know that the hill obsc obscures the line of sight? You have it here in the uh, uh, token for the rules. See, line of sight can be drawn onto a hill and down from a hill, but not through a hill, which is what we're trying to do now. And the same thing applies for impassable terrain. Impassable terrain says that you cannot draw the line of sight through impassable terrain. It's not even a matter of drawing the line of sight to the top of the impassable terrain or from the top of the impassable terrain, you cannot move into or through impassable terrain. So it's just, it just blocks and you can't see anything. So for example, in this case, the barbarian horsemen are fine because the citadel guard here, which is armed with some, I don't know, crazy, uh, crazy um, engineering development put together by the infernal dwarves, and so the problem is that the Inferno Dwarves, they uh, cannot really see the uh, Barbarian Horsemen because you have this building, this impassable terrain in the middle. And uh, that is, so this is obstruction type number one. It makes it impossible to shoot through this obstruction, through a hill and through a... Um, and through an impassable terrain. Obstruction type number two is the one that's given by hindering terrain, which provides cover. So the line of sight is not blocked, but if you are shooting through a piece of forest, then uh, to get to your target, then your shooting is going to have a minus one to the same. And so, for example, this is the case for this other unit here. So if this unit wanted to shoot at the, um, at the citadel guard over here, they would not be able to do so with, uh, unless they pay the penalty for cover, this one here. And as we said, this also applies for 
um, units being in the middle. So for example, if you have a unit here and another unit there, then if you want to shoot at those, you can still do so, but with penalties. And this is further complexified in the main rule book according to the size of the models that are in question. Sometimes you can see past the heads, sometimes you cannot. Um, the full rules are very intricate about this and make a lot of sense from the uh, reality point of view, at least compared to other games. Uh, this is not real life, in case you hadn't noticed. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, in the quick start, uh, the general idea is that if you have a unit in the middle or a hindering terrain like a forest, then you're gonna get the, pena the penalty for cover, and if you have impassable terrain or a hill, well, you just cannot see through uh, a hill. It just doesn't work that way, right? You cannot shoot at all. So these are the modifiers. Uh, yeah, no, these are the tables. These are the modifiers. Uh, long range, ha uh, after half of the weapon's range, you get a minus one. You get a minus one if you are shooting after having moved in the movement phase. Minus one for cover. And, I mean, something that I didn't uh, specify is that you get this uh, penalty if it's obscured at more than half of the footprint of the target unit. That means very, very simply that, that if I if I take this archer here, see, for example, and I put this archer here, this archer is let me put it even even more, you know, like that exactly. So this archer here is not really seeing um, much of this ogre unit. See, let me show you this archer here to the to the north. It's not really seeing much because all of this part of the ogre unit is obscured by the hill. Okay, so it only this archer here only sees one model out of three. So in this case, this model will have to pay the penalty. This other model over here, uh, I didn't want to push that button. I most definitely did not want to push this one here. Yeah, whatever. So this model here to the south, hmm? see, let's look at this one in detail. And this model also only sees one model and a half, so they're gonna have a they're gonna have a penalty. Okay. Good. So this is for the third, sorry, uh, type of uh, aim modifier. There is um, there is another interesting uh, aspect now that we've seen the modifiers to aim in, in in the basic in the discussion of the basics of shooting we've only seen you know just aim three plus hit end the story now we know that this three plus can be more difficult more complex than that and now another thing is that you also don't necessarily remove models once you hit them and you wound them. In some cases, models are wearing protections that are saving them, like, you know, helping them to uh, stay safe against shooting. And this is, for example, the case of armor. So let's take this barbarian horseman here and let's look at the profile. You see that barbarian horsemen have an armor of four, which, which is, you know, quite a good um, value of armor, I would say. And so let's let's see what happens. Let's see how armor comes into play uh, when you are shooting at your targets. So let's start from what we've done already. Ten citizen archers, they are shooting at these five uh, barbarian horsemen. First thing that you do is you check whether you have your opponent, your target in line of sight, and you know each and every one of these highborn. Uh, elves, archers has the five um, barbarians very nicely in line of sight. Second thing that we said that we want to check is the distance. Do we have six? Uh, do we have um, uh, at least 
30 inches between these two yeah as you see here we have kind of six so it is within range and it's actually within short range by the way you can also use the um, line of sight tool to know whether your opponent is in range this is one inch two inch is three inches four five and six okay? so if you see this you know that 12 inches is up to here and that this is 13 14 and 15 this kind of reddish line so when you look at the battlefield like that very simply just select your unit of archers you already know that everything up to here is going to be in short range okay then this is 24 so everything up to here more or less is still in range 30 24 18 12 6 and that's your unit all right so 10 archers so 10 volts we hit on a 3+, plus because there's no modifier, we haven't been doing any movement, we are in short range, and there's no cover between the two of us, between the two units. I roll the dice, and I make 8 threes. Okay, I only make a 1 and a 1, and the rest is all good. Now I have to wound, and to wound I have to look at the strength of my bow, which is 3, and at the resilience of the barbarian horseman which is three again so three versus three i go check into the table three minus three is zero so i look at the result that i need to wound when i have a zero here and it's a four plus so i take the eight results which had hit before i roll them again and i try and do four plus and i make three okay one 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 Two, three, four, four, four. So this four, these three results of four are successful. Now I give the dice to my opponent, I mean my virtual opponent because I'm playing on Universal Battle, and I say I've dealt three wounds to your to your um to your unit of uh, barbarians. So three would die, and like you know, this, this would be really, really bad for a unit of five to have three casualties. But no, because the barbarian horsemen they have armor, they have four um, value of armor, and the way you roll armor uh, saves, and people who are on the forum know that I have to take a drink at this point because I hate the way the armor saves work now in the game but you know being a team player and everything the way that armor saves work is that um, uh, you use a formula and the formula is seven minus the armor okay? seven minus four it's three you need a three plus to save this three uh, barbarian horsemen so I rolled the three dice trying to get a three plus so i can save each one of them each result of three or plus on each of the dice that i roll is going to be um, a wound that i saved through the armor if i roll a one or a two the uh, barbarian in question dies and i roll a two a two and a four and so this means that this barbarian here is dead it's the first two and this is the second barbarian the second two and this is another another one who dies Hadn't it been for the armor and for the very low rolls that I managed to pull quite often, um, another barbarian would have died. But this result here of a four, here the, the arrow has been stopped by the armor of the barbarian, right? So yeah, let's remove, let's remove this three, these two barbarians who uh, died. And um, let's have a look at another, at a different case of a um, protection uh, mechanism. So let's have uh, our citizen archers shoot at the dryads over here. Okay? The dryads, they are in line of sight because I just rotated my unit there. And as you see, this is 6, 12 and 15, so they are in long range. They are within 30, because this is 15, so we are well uh, inside the range of the, uh, of the uh, longbow. But we're also past the short uh, distance shooting. There has no penalty. We are in long range, and so we get the minus one. 
So we take our 10 dice, one shot for each uh, archer. And our aim is 3+, plus, but since we are at long range, it becomes 4+. Plus. I roll this, and I get 5 4+. Pluses. Okay. Now, these 5 also have to wound, as we said. Okay. Now we have to look at the resilience of the dryads, and the resilience of the dryads is 4, it's not 3. I mean, these are you know kind of half trees, so it makes sense that they're kind of sturdy. So what does 4 mean in resilience? It means that if it's strength minus resilience, that gives me the uh, number that I have to get on my dice to inflict the wound. 3 minus 4 is minus 1, and then this means that the archers can wound the dryads on a 5 plus. Only if you roll a 5 or a 6, you are wounding the dryads. If you are rolling... Um, a 4, that's not good enough. And rolling a 4 would be enough to wound a barbarian, but it would not be enough to wound a dragon. I don't think I can be more wordy about, uh, about this. All right, I'll stop it here. Now, uh, I uh, roll 10 to hit, I only hit with 5. Now I roll 5 to wound, and I'm looking for 5 plus. Okay? And I make two. I make a two, a four, a four, a five, and a five. So I manage to wound the dryads uh, twice, to inflict two wounds. Now, how can the dryads protect themselves? Uh, well, let's look at the profile. We see that they have armor zero. Okay? So no armor for, for the dryads here. But they do have Aegis, which is the special protection. And uh, it is rolled if you fail the armor save or if you don't have an armor save. Okay? So it's a 5 plus, just brutal, like that. No modifier, you just shoot that one. So the two wounds that I had inflicted, let's see if I manage to save them. With a 5 or a 6 on each of the die, um, uh, of the dice that I, that I roll, I'm going to save that wound. And I rolled a 1 and a 3, and so I failed them both. And so the two dryads die. Right. Now, this is interesting because you can also um, have armor and Aegis together. Uh, there's not many units which have this type of feature, but some units do have that. And this is the case, for example, of these Grail Knights, the Knights of the Grail that are um, behind the hill. So let me put the Knights of the Grail over here. All right. Nice and easy in the um, uh, short range of my archers, in plain sight, no modifiers, easy stuff, um, simple rolls, because now we're focusing on armor and Aegis. We see here that the Knights of the Grail have armor 5, which is very, very high. And they also have, I guess, 6 plus. Okay? So if they fail the armor roll, they can still roll one die and try and make a 6. And, you know, with that 6, they would save the wound. So let's shoot at these guys. 10 archers hitting on a 3 plus, And it's 8 results of a 3 plus. What do I need to wound? Well, I need to know the resilience. And the resilience is 4. So, resilience 4 against strength 3, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, minus 1 means that you wound on a 5 plus. So, this 8 dice that have it wound on a 5 plus. And I only make 2, this 5 and this 6, the rest is too low. Now, armor for the Knights of the Grey. And we said, what's the formula? 7 minus the armor. 7 minus 5 is 2. This means that these two knights of the grail are going to save these two wounds by rolling anything that's a 2 or higher out of each die here. So it means that only when you roll a 1, these knights of the grail can suffer a wound. Let's roll that and make a 3 and a 4. Huh? So that means that I have managed to save these two wounds. 
what happens if I had uh, rolled a 1 or a 2, which is what's going to happen here when I roll the dice again. No, not doing it. Now, here, okay, let's imagine that I rolled this one here, a 1 and a 6. The 6 for the armor roll of the armor save of 2 plus means that you have saved the wound with the armor. The 1 means that the arrow, after having hit and after having wounded, has also gone through the armor because it has, it an, I don't know, that magic spot under the arm or whatever. Or, you know, that one possibility in 6 that the armor of the knight doesn't work on uh, against the arrow. Having a special protection save means that you can roll another die for each of the wounds that, that you haven't um, blocked through the armor, so for this one wound here. And if you make a six, it's a slim chance, but if you make a six, you can save it. And no, it's a three. It would have been too nice if that worked. So you take this guy and you remove it because it has failed the uh, Aegis save, which is the uh, last thing that you can hope to pass. Okay. So this is a bit to complexify on what happens in terms of the um, uh, of the uh, shooting procedure, in terms of the modifiers and in terms of the uh, hitting and wounding and the armor and the Aegis save um, um, sequence. Something that's still important and that we'll see uh, at the end of this uh, right now before we finish this advanced shooting concept, before we move to the very advanced concept, very advanced, um, is what happens when you shoot at a target which has more than one wound on the profile. So, so far, we've always been shooting at units where if you deal a wound, you deal a wound to that skeleton, the skeleton dies. You deal a wound to that dryad, and that dryad dies. What happens with units like the um, ogre uh, tribesmen, which have three health points? Okay, what happens when you shoot at those? So let let's see what happens. Let's just take this very brave citizen archers who are fighting against everybody. I, I mean, that they high bone. Uh, <laughs> Nobody likes them, so of course they're picking at everybody. Okay, so this um, these archers here have the um, um, ogre tribesmen in the short range, and now now that we know what we need to do before shooting, let's look at the tribesmen profile. They have three wounds, three health points. They have resilience four, and they have armor two. Okay, so let's remember resilience 4 and armor 2. Now, the elves are shooting, 10 of them. The aim is 3 plus, I roll and I make 6. Okay, it says here in orange, 6 results of 3 plus. Strength 3, resilience 4, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. If the result is minus 1, you wound on a 5 plus. Okay. The tables tell you that. So I roll the 6, looking for 5 plus. And I make 2. All right, This 2 here. Now, the armor save of the uh, uh, tribesmen. They don't have Aegis, but they have armor. They have an armor of 2. So 7 minus 2 is 5. Let's roll 2 dice and try and do 5 plus to save these guys. And we make a 3 and a 4. So none of these two wounds are saved by uh, the ogre. So what happens here? The tribesmen have three health points. So what we do here is that we make a note by adding a symbol of something that, you know, that works for you for a wound, either this or this one here. This is very gory. Let's use the gory one. You know, and let's put wounds tokens on this unit here. And now this reminds us that, you know, these two ogres here, they're fine, but as soon as this guy here suffers another wound, it's going to get to the three total lost health point and it's going to die. Okay. Now it's, it's still alive because it still has one uh, health point left, but if I inflict another wound with magic or with shooting again or in combat, 
then this guy here is not going to be able to fight. Uh, it's going to be removed from the battlefield. All right? So I think that this concludes the second section of the video where we look at the full rules behind um, behind shooting before we had only looked at aim, wounding and removing casualties. Now we have looked at aim, modifiers to aim, wounding and armor and Aegis and both of them and multi-wound uh, enemies. So this completes what you need to know in terms of rules. So let's now move to uh, how you can apply these rules to, um, to your advantage. Okay? So let's move to the uh, very advanced concept Woo! in shooting. All right.